Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Mistletoe Yeti, and I'm sipping on some vanilla chai tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel, and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting, and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars Black, Green Oxide, Fire Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Burnt Umber, which I will call Brown. And of course you can switch those up as well, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that we'll be using for some drawing later, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number 12 round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that you can use to help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint the inside wall of the cave and the cave floor. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. And what I'm first gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself like a medium gray tone that we'll use as the base for both of these sections. So I've magically pre-mixed some so you can see where I'm headed. So how I got to this was I'm gonna be using a lot of white because I'm going to be using um, this color for a lot of areas within my painting. So I've got a good amount of white. I've got a little scoop of black and a little scoop of brown, and then I'm gonna just start mixing them together. It may end up initially a little bit too dark or a little bit too light for my liking, so once I get the, once I've got it nice and mixed, I can start to tweak that color if I want it any lighter or any darker. This is looking pretty good, but I think I want it just a little bit darker, so I'm gonna add just a touch more black and a touch more brown into it. And then I'll just kind of keep mixing it until I get what I want. I do know that it will get a little bit darker as it dries, so I'm just mentally planning for that um, in my head. So that's looking pretty good to me. It's a nice neutral type of med oops, medium gray. I'm just gonna kind of wipe my brush off on the side of my palette. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a couple of markers. So up in the top right hand corner of my canvas, I'm gonna come down, I would say about a half of an inch to an inch, somewhere in there, give myself a marker. Down on the right hand side, if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, somewhere in through here, I'm almost a quarter or halfway between that and the bottom of my canvas. So somewhere in through here is gonna be my next marker. Then the um, I'm gonna make another marker. If this is about halfway left to right in my canvas and about halfway up and down, so kind of the center of my canvas, I'm gonna come over till I'm about maybe three or four inches away from the edge of my canvas and maybe a little bit higher than that center mark. So somewhere in this vicinity. And then I'm gonna come down from that about three inches and then just in just a little bit. So something like that. So I have myself four markers and we're gonna connect those markers. So I'm gonna take this one and connect it to here. This is gonna be where the back wall of the cave and the floor meet. So I'm just gonna kind of go along here and then maybe I'll just kind of dip it down in through here. I'm going to then connect here to here 
to up there. <laughs> so what this is going to be, this is going to be the the um, kind of the edge of the wall, the exterior wall of the um, of the cave. So I'm going to just kind of connect these two in through here like this, and then I'm going to give this a big kind of ripply type of um, curve going up in through here. And then maybe we'll kind of bring it around like this and just a couple of ripples up and through there. So this is the section we're going to paint right now. I'm going to add black to my brush. So my brush is dirty and I just added black. This is going to be the inside part of the cave. It's going to get nice and dark in through here and then lighter as it comes out. So I have black plus my gray on my brush. I'm going to paint right in through here like this. And then I'm going to be using a kind of rubbing circular type of brush stroke. I'm in my head considering this to be rock as it's a cave. So I can certainly utilize a variety of rough type of brush strokes. And then as I come out towards this right hand side, I'm just kind of letting my brush run out of paint. And then when I go towards that right hand side, I'll just pick up that original gray again. So that way it'll get a little bit lighter as it's coming out, but it doesn't go all the way light on me. So just kind of getting this to blend in a little bit and you can certainly just kind of keep manipulating it as it's drying. So this is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna pick up my gray and just finish up the wall. So I'm just kind of coming out and because I didn't wash my brush, what happens is I'm gonna have that darker area on the left hand side and it's going to get a little bit lighter as it's coming out the um, out the cave into the open so something like this and then once I've got that done what I'm going to do just kind of making sure I've got all of my little areas covered in in through here just letting myself kind of run out of paint and then of course you can certainly just kind of keep manipulating this as it's drying just to get it whatever kind of blend that you're that is appealing to you then I'm going to go ahead and do my floor area so my floor area is going to be kind of snaking out in through here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that gray paint plus a little bit of blue and just a teeny tiny touch of black. So this is going to give me my kind of outline for the, um, for the floor as it's coming out into the open. I'm going to give myself a little bit of a marker down here in the bottom left hand corner, right in through here, and I'm going to meet this to here. But I'm going to have a big kind of ripply type of wave so that way it looks like it's the edge of the um, of the cave itself. So I'm gonna bring this out like this, maybe back in like this, and then out, and then just kind of ripple it in through here. So I have like two little bumps coming out. And then I'm gonna use that same color combination, gray plus black and blue, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to do this little edge over here, just so it's a little bit darker than the actual um, wall itself like that and then I'm going to color in I'm not going to wash my brush I'm going to color in the rest of the ground I'm going to pick up some blue and white and I'm going to be doing this kind of chaotic left to right type of brush stroke I want to make sure this outline that I did on this left hand side and the right hand side kind of work their way in naturally into this snowy type of floor that I'm doing in the or ground that I'm doing. So I'm going to be using a left to right type of messy brush stroke, but I do want to bump into this little dark, darker outline that I had. So again, it looks nice and natural. And you can get this to go as blue or as white as you want. Right now, I just picked up white plus gray and blue. So that way I can have an assortment of these cool winter tones on the ground so it doesn't look too flat. It looks like maybe there's some, you know, piles of snow here and there. And I just want it to be a nice cool gray with a little bit of blue in it. So it gives the idea that there's snow, but I don't really necessarily want it to go all the way white. So I just keep utilizing the blue, the gray, and the white on my brush at the same time using kind of a circular left to right brush stroke so I can get it to have this textural type of look to it. And then once I've got this all nice and colored in, you can certainly keep tweaking it as much as you want. We are going to be utilizing this same brush 
for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this uh, large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the exterior part of the cave, which will include a couple of hanging icicles. I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry, at least where you're gonna be hanging those icicles. So this is that time where you get to take the extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer and get it dry that way. So. The colors that I'm gonna be using are that gray that we created, brown, white, and blue. And what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna be using my brush to put a couple of hanging icicles in place. And while those are kind of drying, we'll go ahead and paint the rest of the exterior and then we'll come back and put some little details on. I'm gonna be using my bristle brush, but if you feel more comfortable using a smaller brush, like the medium or the small brush to do the icicles, feel free to do so. I just want mine to have some volume and some carefreeness to them. So that's why I'm gonna use my, my um, larger brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm gonna squish it in the gray on the side of my palette. So what this will do, this will put the paint within the bristles and it'll also bring those bristles together so they're in a more controlled fashion. I do know that I'm gonna have my cute animal up to about here, so I don't really want to, or maybe a little bit higher, so I don't really want those icicles to hang in front of his face, but maybe you want yours too. <laughs> I'm just gonna do some kind of shorter ones. So I've got my gray paint, and I'm gonna just kind of bring some of these down in a pointy type of fashion. I'm going to have them kind of emerging from the, um, from the edge of the, of the rock so you can paint the edge of the rock too as you're going along doing it. I'm gonna do a couple of different lengths for them. So just kind of giving myself these, um, these varying lengths. And I'm, because I, we used a little bit of black in that background of the interior of the cave, these will stand out a little bit. But if yours aren't standing out enough, you can always put a tiny bit of white paint on your brush. We are gonna be doing um, highlights and shadows and stuff on them to make them pop out a little bit more. But if you're having difficulty seeing yours on top of here, just add a little bit of um, white to your brush and that'll get them to be more visible. And then I think I'm gonna go ahead and put one over here, this one's gonna be pretty long over here on the edge, something like this. And again, pick up a tiny, like I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white just so we can kind of see this one. Maybe this one's gonna be a little bit longer. There we go. And just skinnier at the ends, maybe a little bit thicker as they go up towards the top um, where they're meeting the, the rock. And then what I'm gonna do, I have that gray on my brush. I'm gonna start over here on the left-hand side to kind of release that gray or get it to um, just kind of be the darkest over there. I'm also right now gonna pick up gray plus a little bit of brown on my brush. So this is gonna give the exterior of the rock a little bit more dimension to it and make it look a little bit different than that interior por portion of the rock. I'm gonna bring this gray plus a little bit of um, brown all the way down to the bottom right in making it touch my, um, my ground that we had. So something like this, just bringing it all the way. And again, this is a rock, so you don't need any special brush stroke. Just kind of rubbing it on there will get those colors to, to work together with one another and give you a nice, um, pretty believable type of rock. I'm gonna go ahead and get this all over into this area. And now that I'm kind of creeping over towards the right-hand side of the rock, I'm gonna start utilizing, and let me just put this up in through this area too. I'm going to start utilizing white on my dirty brush to get this right-hand side of the cave the lightest. So it looks like it's being illuminated by whatever the light source is outside of the cave. So I've got white on my brush right now, and I'm gonna just bring it all the way to the edge cross it over into where I have those icicles, something like this. And I'm just using kind of a circular type of brush stroke, 
it, just getting these colors to really just kind of blend in and talk with one another. If you feel like your brush is overloaded, at any time you can just wipe it off on your paper towel and that way you can start with a, not necessarily a clean brush but one that is easier to control. And you don't, uh, once you get the majority of the paint on there, you don't really need to utilize much paint um, to get the effects of highlights and stuff of that nature into these rocks. So once I've got that in through there, I've got this lighter area kind of um, identified. I'm going to put a little bit more white paint on my brush. And this little bump out right here, I'm going to make that a part of the um, rock that bumps out. <laughs> so I'm just adding a little bit more white, making sure I bring it all the way to my ground. It might just extend it a little bit um, because I wanted to make sure it got all the way to the ground. And then I just wiped my brush off and I'm gonna get this light area to just blend in with this darker area. So what this does is it gives you the illusion that this little part here is kind of sunken in and has a little bit more dimension to it. And you can always pop this one out a little bit more with just a little bit more lightness and then just get it to blend into that darker area. And that's gonna give you some good um, kind of ripply look to your, to your rock formation. And you can just kind of keep adding to that lightness as much as you feel is important. You can even add some lightness down here if you want the rock to kind of pop out down in through here. So anywhere that you add the lightness, the rock is gonna pop out. So now we just need to go and um, finesse those, the little icicles a little bit. So I'm just making sure that I've got everything painted in, in through here. And this is where I'm gonna start utilizing a little bit of the blue. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a touch of the blue, white, and gray. Just a teeny bit of each, just so I can kind of give myself a little bit of the coolness to these. Like they, they've got some uh, that, that icicle type of appearance to them. So a little bit of this blue, I'm gonna just kind of bet dabble it into the rock a little bit, bring it down into some of those icicles, just again, so we can make it look like it's nice and chilly and it's got a lot of dimension to it and it's got the, the coldness <laughs> that I think it would. Now I'm just picking up some white paint and I'm gonna add these little bits of highlights to it so you can see maybe the little shimmer to, to the icicles, something like this. And of course you could use a smaller brush to accomplish this, whatever works out. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more lightness up and through here so it's maybe looking like the snow and the ice have piled up on these on the edge of the the cave, and again, you can make yours as bright or as dark as you want. I'm opting for my for these couple to be pretty darn bright, and then I just want it to look like it's naturally kind of merging into the rock formation above, so I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my brush and get this paint to, to blend in a little bit. You could also utilize a little bit of darkness on these um, icicles, like a couple of dots of black or something like that to give them a little bit more dimension. So I'd probably wait for mine to dry a little bit and then see if I wanna do anything more. Or you can conversely also, I just added a little bit of black and gray to my brush. You could also make that cave a little bit darker right underneath them. If you want them to pop out a little bit more, you can just put a little bit of darkness underneath them and that'll get them to pop out even more like the darkness from the cave behind them so that'll get those to pop out a little bit more so you can bend and tweak this as much as you want to and then we are going to be utilizing our piece of chalk for the next step so once you've got your cave done you can put this large brush away take out your um, piece of chalk and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our Yeti. I'm gonna use my chalk. Um, I'm gonna give you some markers. We'll connect the markers with some basic shapes and hopefully by, by the time we're done, we'll have a fun shape that we get to color in. Um, uh, we're not gonna be doing any fine-tuned detail, just some basic shapes so we can get the, the um, animal in place. So I'm gonna have mine really 
large. <laughs> it's got a really large head and a really long arms and stuff. Um, I'm going to have it occupying a good amount of space on my canvas, but I'm going to first start with an oval type of shape for the head. So I'm going to have my head occupying about this much area. So if you kind of, let me just put this in the center here. If you find about the center of your canvas, top to, or left to right, and then maybe come down about halfway down your canvas and come over to the right maybe about two inches. That's gonna be about the bottom center of the head. And then I'm gonna go about halfway between there and the top of my canvas for the top of my head. I'm gonna have um, the if you, about the center of there come to the right maybe about three inches or so and same thing to the left. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just gonna give myself a nice sketcherly kind of oval type of shape. Yours can be circle, it can be oval, it's a cartoon style character, so perfection is definitely not needed. <laughs> so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some arms. I'm gonna put the arms on first before I put the body because the arms are really large and they're gonna be kind of in front of the, bod the body. So I'm gonna come down about halfway down the head Give myself a couple of markers on the left and on the right, the left and the right of the head. That's going to be the top of like the shoulders. I'm going to do this right one first because it's going to be kind of hanging down. So the next marker I'm going to give is right about in through here. So if this is halfway left to right, I'm about an inch to the right of that. And then I'm going to come straight down from this marker all the way to about here. So this is maybe about four inches from the bottom of my canvas. I'm going to connect this marker to here with a kind of a curved line. So I'm going to come in just a little bit, then back out and round it around like this. And then I'm going to go from this marker up to here. And this is going to be a big curved type of line. So something like this will give me the outside or the exterior shape of that right arm. So the left arm, I want this one to look like it's being held out towards the viewer. So I'm going to do a big oval type of shape in through here. This is going to represent the front of that paw of sorts. And then I'm going to connect here with a little bit of an arcing line to write in through here. This will all be um, kind of disguised with fur and stuff, but that's going to be the hand. So now I need to put my body on. The body is just going to be long and slender with a couple of big feet down below. So I'm going to give myself um, the exterior side of the leg and body in through here. So this mine's going to be maybe a little bit to the right of the side of the head. And I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a curved type of line, maybe comes in a little bit. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to go about halfway in this paw and do the same thing coming down maybe about the same it can be a little bit higher or lower than this one that's going to be the exterior then i'm going to kind of split the difference between these two and then come up maybe a little bit shorter than this paw in through here this is going to be the in between part of the legs then i'll give myself the inside portion and now i just got to put on a couple of big feet <laughs> so i'm just going to give myself some fun like i don't know Yeti feet, <laughs> something like this. I'm not a Yeti expert, so these are just imaginary feet that appear to me as if they would belong on a, on a Yeti. <laughs> so, so, and they can be crooked. And that's all I'm going to do for my outline. Uh, you can certainly change yours or tweak it or do whatever you want, but we're going to be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your chalk away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our Yeti. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are gray, brown, black, and white. And what I'm gonna, in essence, do first is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a browner shade of gray. So that's gonna be the dominant color of this base coat. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to take my original gray and I add brown to it. You could add brown and a little bit of white, but I'm predominantly just gonna add brown to it. So what this is doing, it's giving me, an, again, a nice neutral shade of gray, but it's gonna be different 
than the gray that I used on the cave so that way I can see the difference between the two and it also provides me with um, a warmer kind of tone for the base for the for the fur. So now that I've got that in play and you want to just make sure that you can clearly see the difference between the two, now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to wash my brush but I'm going to pick up that um, brownish gray plus a little bit of black on my brush. So this way, I'm going to start in my dark areas, which is going to be underneath the, um, the chest or the head, and then I'm going to work my way towards the lighter areas. So I have brown and that brown, and excuse me, I have black plus that brownish gray on my brush. I know that I'm going to have a big beard in through here, so I'm putting this really messy in through here. I'm going to also bring a little bit of this up into this little corner in through here. So I will be pulling down some pieces of my Yeti beard in a little bit, but right now I'm just bringing this fur, this darker fur down in through here. And again, it's that brownish gray plus black on my brush. I'm gonna go all the way underneath my um, paws and just bring this down. I'm picturing this, to, this Yeti to have some really long kind of fluffy type of fur. So I'm using these long strokes, but they have a little bit of bend or curve into them. I'm still just picking up a little bit of that brownish gray plus black on my brush. And then once I get to the ankles, I'm going to start just picking up the um, brown gray color. So I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up that um, that war war warm gray kind of color. And now I'm just applying it in through here, giving myself some rough edges because I want there to look like there's going to be some fluffy fur at the bottom of those feet. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And again, uh, this is just a really hairy creature. <laughs> so it's gonna have lots of roughness around the bottoms of the feet and the bottoms of the hands and all that good stuff. So if you, if you want yours to have a lot of movement and stuff in it, awesome. So now that I've got that interior part, I'm just gonna do the same thing with the head and the arms. So I know that we're gonna be adding highlights later, which will help to, or lighter fur, which will help to give these, form, these um, shapes form. But right now I'm just really looking to get the base coat of them on. So I'm gonna start with this arm in through here. That's the arm, and then this is the hand. So because I know that this is the hand, I'm gonna just uh, utilize kind of a directional type of brush stroke. And then when I get down to the bottom of my circle type of shape, I'm gonna give it this rough, uneven look at the bottom. So just kind of pulling out a couple of those pieces of fur. And if you can see some of the background gray underneath, that's awesome. Or if a little bit of your chalk is still showing through, that's fine too. And again, I'm just picking up the warm gray right now so we can get this base coat and you can see how it is different than the gray that we utilized earlier. So just getting this entire area painted in. And then when I get to the edges of this arm, I'll do the same thing with bringing out a couple of longer furry pieces. So I'm at the edge now, so I can just kind of pull out a couple of those longer furry pieces, something like that. And I'm not worried about perfect detail at this point, because again, I know that I'm going to be utilizing um, lots of highlights and stuff to add more to this. This is just kind of getting my long hair party started. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the face. So just coloring it in with this warm gray color, going over my chalk marks, Right where it meets the shoulders, if you want to make sure that you remain able to see the difference, you can leave a little bit of a space or just leave a little bit of that chalk mark. So later when we go to paint it in, you'll know, you'll be able to identify the difference between the two. And then as I come down in through here, this is where I'm going to want to have my Yeti type beard. <laughs> so I'm just bringing a couple of these longer pieces in through here. Because I, 
the black has worked its way off of my brush, we can now see the difference between those two. And then when I get to the top of the head, I'm gonna add a little bit of fluff on the top of the head as well. So now that I'm here, I can just kind of pull out a couple of longer pieces along the edges of the head. And again, we'll add more to it later. This is just kind of setting the stage for where we want those um, longer pieces of hair. And then I'm going to be utilizing my small brush for the next step so once you've got this step accomplished you can put this uh, medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to be painting our facial features i'm going to use my small brush the colors i'm using are black white blue and my warm gray and if i need any other colors I'll let you know. <laughs> so what I'm going to first do is kind of put the features in place. I'll put a little circle for the nose and the mouth and the eyes and and then we'll color that in. So I really want this to look um, sketchily and kind of using free style brush strokes. I don't want it to look really tight like uh, illustrated where you have marker outlines and stuff. So I'm going to be using a nice um, free-flowing kind of brush stroke. So I'm gonna put some of my warm tan plus a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm going to draw a circle for my nose. I'm gonna have my nose, if this is about halfway up or down my circle, I'm going to have my nose a little bit below that. So I'm just gonna right now kind of do a little bit of an outline around the nose with um, both of those colors and it's a real soft kind of outline. I don't need anything real firm of a line. I'm gonna do the same thing for the mouth. I've got a really wide grin type of um, mouth happening. So I'm just gonna kind of do a nice loose kind of sketchily line, maybe put a couple of little curves on the, on the um, outside edges of it like this. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the eyes. So I'm gonna have my eyes pretty large. I'm gonna have them coming kind of down like this. And then I'm just gonna give this top almost little outline for it. And same thing with over here. Gonna just give myself a loose outline. And I like to do this, especially if I'm doing an animal or a creature like this that has a lot of fur involved. This really helps to give it a little bit more of a realistic look to it. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. And I'm gonna put blue and white paint on my brush. So blue and white. This is gonna be the base coat for the eyes. So I'm just gonna kinda of give a thin coat with blue and white. And I'm gonna do it in um, an arcing type of brush stroke. So this way, if I do have inconsistencies in the color, which is what I'm planning on, this will allude to the way a real eye kind of looks. And I'm just kind of painting in that entire section with blue and a little bit of white, and I'm just giving it a thin coat of paint. I don't need it to be thick at this point. I actually want it to dry a little bit through this process so we can build an eyeball or a pupil and a little twinkle in the eye as well and some white around it too. So that's gonna be the base coat for the eyes. Then I'm gonna wash and dry my little brush and I'm going to put a little highlight on my tip of my nose. So I'm gonna pick up um, white and just kind of give myself a little bit of a highlight right in through there. Then what I do is I wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm gonna pick up some of that warm gray. So this way I start with a, it the brightest where I want it, which is kind of at the tippy top of the nose or a little away from that. And then I just kind of blend it out into the bottom portion of the nose. So this way it gives it a little bit of dimension. We've got a little bit of a highlight on the top of it. So it looks nice and round and kind of bubbly. And of course you can shape yours into whatever you want. And then I'm just gonna use my black and my gray to make sure that I have a little bit of a shadow on the outside of it. So black, I think I need a little bit more of that 
and I'm only using the warm gray at this point, not the, not the cool gray that we used on the cave. And then I'm just gonna kind of rub this out so it looks like we've got a little bit of a shadow around that nose, maybe a little bit under those eyes. And if you do something and you're like, whoa, that was too much, just keep picking up that, that gray color. And that's gonna help you to just kind of blend it out, make it look a little bit more natural, blend it out into the um, area of, around the mouth and under those eyes. And maybe I'll put a little bit up in through here. Not much, I'm gonna, we're gonna have some highlight later with all the other fur, but this'll just maybe give us a little bit more dimension in, in the inside part of those eyes or the crook of the nose. And yours is probably gonna end up looking way different than mine, which is awesome because it'll just make it your little winter Yeti as opposed to making it look exactly like mine. That's the fun of these kind of characters. Then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna go in to finish those eyes as soon as I just round the edge of this nose a little bit. There we go. Woo, my, my easel just dropped a bit. Let me put that back up for a second. That'll give you a little startle. Um, so I just washed and dried my brush and I'm gonna um, pick up some black paint and I'm gonna put the pupil in the eyes. So I'm going for the pupil in pretty much the center of the eye, which is going to make this, um, this Yeti look like he's looking at the viewer. So that, helps to tell the viewer what direction he's looking at is where you place that pupil. And I'm going for a pretty darn large pupil. Um, you could certainly make your smaller, whatever works for you, whatever kind of character look you want for yours. I'm keeping it away from the top of the blue um, and bringing it pretty darn far. And they don't have to be exactly the same size from one eye to the other. That's what'll make it look nice and um, uniquely yours if they're, if they're a little bit different shape. Mine are definitely not exactly the same shape from one side to the other, but that's okay. You can always keep tweaking it, whatever you need to do. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put some whites around the eyes. So wash and dry my brush. I'm going to overlap this white on top of the edge of the blue, and I'm just gonna give myself a little kind of light exterior portion that's gonna have this um, the whites of the eyes, giving it a, an extra kind of cute look to it. And of course, you can certainly make your super bright white. I'm just going for a little soft, soft tone in through here, just kind of getting it on. And then what I'll do is I, I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue as well, just to make sure that these kind of talk a little bit together. They don't have to talk 100%, but I definitely wanted it to look a little bit more on the natural side, maybe a little bit more white over and through here. And then if you feel like you need to or want to amp up that blue anymore, you can certainly pick up a little bit more of that blue. You could even make the top portion of the eye a little bit darker. So if you bring back that or put a little bit more of the blue up there, you could also put a teeny tiny bit of black on your brush with the blue and make it almost look like it's a little shadowed up at the top of that eye. That again will make it look a little bit more natural if you're going for the natural Yeti look. <laughs> so wherever you wanna take yours in that realistic realm, feel free to do so. And then I just need to put some sparkles in the eye. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white paint. I'm gonna put my sparkles kind of crossing over the pupils. So I'm gonna do like a uh, kind of a round spot there and then a little tiny dot bash type of mark in through there and then I'll do something similar on the other eye. So a little round in through here and then maybe like a little dot bash type of thing in through there. I am going to eventually want to have some eyelashes and stuff so I just picked a, up a little bit of black paint and I'm going to just enhance this area above the eyes just a little bit. I don't want to have all black eyelashes but this is going to kind of um, get me going on this aspect of it. So if you wanna add that little bit now, feel free to do so. We're gonna add a lot more when we add the um, fur and stuff, but this'll get that um, the dark pieces in while you have it on your brush. And then we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little adjustments that you feel necessary. 
and you can put the small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint shadows on the ground under our Yeti. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black and brown, and if I need to, I'll go into any of my gray or blue, but I think I'll be all right, but if you run into any trouble, those are definitely your backup colors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch my brush just a teeny bit in black and just a teeny bit in brown. You can even just wipe it off on your paper towel or on the side of your palette, because you don't need a lot. I'm gonna put a tiny bit underneath his feet and a little bit behind him as if the light is out here and it's just kind of casting a little bit of a shadow underneath his feet and below and behind him. So very little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of rub it. I'm gonna just move my canvas just a little bit here so I can get into this. Um, just rub it up just a little bit underneath. You can even touch your brush a little bit in water. That's gonna help you to kind of um, manipulate that shadow so it's not really too firm and it'll help you to kind of spread out that paint a little bit if you want to. So I'm just going to kind of give this little shadow. He's got a shadow maybe underneath him, maybe a little bit out this side here, and then some in the back or behind his um, body in through here. I think I need a little bit more black so we can see it just a little bit better. And I don't want to lose all of that blue between his legs because that's going to help give us a little bit more dimension. So this is just really trying to tell or sell the story of it being, um, you know, some kind of light source. And then I'll take a little bit and rub it behind over this side as if it's on the floor behind him. So just something like this. And again, I don't have much paint on my brush with a little bit of... Um, water on my brush just so I can spread that paint around a bit. I think there'd be a little bit of a shadow behind this leg too. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And you can certainly manipulate yours whatever way you feel is needed. And if you felt that you needed, you know, more shadow underneath the uh, the fur in anywhere, like down and through here, you could certainly pick up that little bits of black, but we're gonna be doing um, much more detail on the body, so if you feel that that's necessary, feel free to do so, but when we put the other information on the body, those will pop out. And then we are going to be utilizing um, this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur on the Yeti. I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my warm gray, white, brown, and if I need to go into any black, I will and I'll let you know. But what I'm in essence gonna do is I'm gonna build my way to the light fur, which will in essence be white, um, but I wanna build from what we already have and I want it to look nice and natural. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a tan. So I've already done this here so you can see where I'm headed. All I did to get there was I mixed brown and white. And I don't need necessarily a lot of it, but I definitely want it to be on the browner side so that way I can see it on top of the gray that I did and I, and I want it to be pretty light so that way it has almost like a luminescent kind of value underneath the white that we're gonna put in a minute and it helps us to build that beautiful coat of hair slash fur that Yetis have. <laughs> so I've got the color on my brush. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start down at the bottom of the animal and I don't need a lot of paint on my brush, so you can always just wipe it off on your paper towel. The less you have on your brush, the more control that you will um, keep throughout the whole way. So I'm just gonna kind of utilize this directional brush stroke. As I'm doing this, I wanna keep some of that gr the original warm gray underneath showing, so that way it allows it to have dimension to it. If we cover up the whole thing, then we won't have much dimension to it. So I'm gonna start with my feet and I'm doing it in this curved type of manner, making it look like maybe he's got a couple of 
toes or you know separating parts you can leave little dark spot spots in between but I want it to kind of look like it's um, a foot of sorts and then I'm gonna with I'm not gonna wash my brush or anything I'm just gonna kind of move up that that leg I'm gonna put a little bit underneath here I know that my hand is right there so I'm not gonna do too much on this one because I want that um, hand to be brighter than here so I'm gonna just kind of go a little soft on the on the um, addition of fur in through there and then as I work my way into this belly area I know that I want this to be nice and dark in here as well so I'm not I'm just letting myself kind of run out of paint so it it allows for that shadowy area to still be evident and I'm giving myself some nice kind of curved type of brush strokes we'll put a little bit of lightness on it in a minute but this is just kind of where I'm starting I'm gonna reload my brush with a little bit of that tan so I'm gonna work my way into the face I'm starting on the arms and I'm giving myself directional brush strokes which tell the viewer what direction that fur is going in here's the hand right here I want this fur to look like it's coming out to the viewer and that it's the brightest at the part that it pops out the most so that's why I am putting this area right in through here pretty darn light and we'll put more white on it in a, in a bit but right now just kind of letting my brush do the work with very little bit of paint on it and then I'm going to go ahead and work on the other arm with some more of that brown paint or the tan paint on my brush and this one I want kind of the um, hair to fall this way as it's leaning towards the inside of the arm and then outwards on this right hand side so you could you know you could have yours having curly hair if you wanted to you could really have fun with the length of the hair maybe yours has shorter hair than mine but I'm definitely just kind of bringing it in the direction that I feel it would go this will be the paw in through here or the hand I'm not sure if yetis have hands or paws but <laughs> maybe it's uh, you can use your own imagination as to what you feel there um, front things are <laughs> so that works for me there now I'm going to go ahead and work on this layer on the face so uh, this is going to be a mouth as well so I'm actually going to be utilizing this left to right kind of brush stroke around where I want the mouth to uh, kind of emerge so just something like this and I don't necessarily want him to look like he's got these big huge lips I know he's kind of vying for a mistletoe kiss but I'm going to just kind of gently give him the, these, um, you know, the, uh, the illusion of some lips, but without them being too, too um, invasive. And I'm just going to kind of give him some little cheeks in through here and just kind of allow him for this to go like that. Now I'm going to utilize that tan to start this beard in through here. And you can pull some of these pieces down even further. It's a whole lot of fun to give it whatever kind of length that you want and just kind of getting it to blend in with that original um, gray and if you need to you can pick up some of that original gray like I just did in order for this to kind of merge into one another so you can have that appearance of dimension and bring it down as much as you want and now I'm going to go ahead and work my way up the face just bringing some of these pieces kind of out again I don't necessarily want to um, do too too much just kind of giving this um, texture to the hair I'm going to put white on in a minute but again this is just allowing me to kind of set the stage giving myself some big eyebrows in through here like this and going to do the same thing over on this side and again I'm not doing a whole heck of a lot just really kind of playing with the lightness of this tan color I'm going to do the same thing on the top we already put a couple of pieces of fur up in through there with the original warm gray now I'm just kind of enhancing them but leaving a little bit of a space between where I just put the eyebrows and um, this top fur and now that I've got everything in place now I'm just going to start dipping into some white paint on my dirty brush and this is going to give me the white fur on top so this is just a slow building process you don't need to use a ton of paint if the paint underneath is too wet 
you can certainly just kind of let it dry but I really like when I'm doing these long fur or hair type of steps I really like for the for the collars to talk to one another like right now I'm using white but I feel like I want to pick up the tan as well so I can have both colors kind of talking together in through here so I picked up white plus the tan you could certainly do the same thing you can utilize a different brush if you wanted the more individual pieces you could I'm switching brushes so I can show you what I'm talking about you could use your bristle brush and this will give you these longer kind of more um, delicate type of pieces that you could utilize it kind of brings them together in more of a solid type of fashion if you wanted to have that type of look to it or you can utilize this you know small brush or the medium brush I think I'm going to kind of play with the with the bristle brush right now because I, I really like the way that I get the um, little pieces of fur to happen so I've got white plus a tiny bit of that tan on my brush you can certainly like I said utilize as much or as little as you want if you want these toes to look like they pop out the most put the brightest part kind of um, in the area where you feel the it would pop out the most to the viewer so either the top or right along that curve as it comes out um, towards the viewer and then I'm going to go ahead and just kind of work my way up I don't want this interior area to be too too um, light so I'm not going to do too much in through there going to work my way up in through here I know that I want my brightest area to be the part that sticks out the most to the viewer in through here so I'm just going to add that in through there and right now I'm just kind of adding these fun highlights with white and you can pick up that t that light tan as well just to get that to blend in a little bit and uh, again I like using the bristle brush and, and or the um, medium brush but right now I'm feeling like I'm getting better texture with my bristle brush so you can certainly fiddle with and play with whichever one you feel works best for you and then I'm going to go ahead and move over to this right arm so I'm just kind of following the same pattern with um, using white on my brush and intermingling it with that original or the light tan to give myself this um, this dimensional fur and he's looking fluffy and he's looking you know comfortable and all warm in his big fluffy you know Yeti fur <laughs> and once I do this and you can see I'm just kind of working my way up to the head and once I get up to the head I'll just put a little bit in his chin in through here and again not a whole lot just a little bit to give that uh, you know that brightness maybe a little bit on those lips maybe a little bit on the the cheeks in through here and again if you feel like you go too white just bring back a little bit of that tan and the light tan and that will help you to to, or even the original um, the original warm gray that we put on there so wherever your comfort zone is you know, put a little bit in this head up in through here oh yeah it's when we start getting oh he's got to be so cute sorry when I start getting these little light pieces at the end it's like oh yeah he's got he's got all the little makings of what I had hoped he would gonna put some cute little eyebrows I think I'm gonna switch to my medium brush for the eyebrows because I want those to be a little bit more individual looking so I switched to my medium brush and I'm just gonna put this bright layer and of course you can see that I'm not overdoing it I'm not working whoops I just flung my brush <laughs> I get excited when it comes to these things so I just switched my brush oh actually I had I was using this brush initially so I have my um, bra my tan and white on my brush so I'm just gonna kind of uh, utilize these in through here with these cute little brush strokes for the eyebrows and again if you feel like you go too much you can always just bring back some of those original colors make it look as voluminous as you want bring out these fun kind of flyaway pieces of hair in through here bring some down over onto the side of the face just have fun with it I mean this is your your 
adorable snow snow creature you can make it look as you know fluffy and cute as you want you can bring in any more information around those eyes if you feel like you want more eyelashes bring in more eyelashes if you feel like you're you want your nose brighter make your nose brighter just have a whole lot of fun with it i think i'm going to put a little bit more brightness over on this little fur in through here on his cheeks like this yeah there we go he's so cute <laughs> he's he's got a cute little button nose and just do any little little tweaks that you want maybe his grin is a little bit more up on this side maybe i put a little bit more of this little crevice in through here sometimes when you're doing it too you might have to go back and make little adjust adjustments if you you know paint it over something that you feel that you know you want it in, you know have that bit of di of dimension or information you might have to re put it there maybe you've painted over it during your fun painting process like I sometimes do <laughs> so just feel free to keep tweaking it enjoy the process we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so once you've got this done you can put your large or your medium brush away take out your um, make any little tweaks that you want take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint some mistletoe i'm going to have i'm going to use my small brush the colors i'm using are green white black and red and how I'm going to do this, oh, and, and gray. How I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to first just put some stems down where I want the mistletoe to be. So I'm going to be using green plus a touch of black on my brush. And I'm going to have mine coming, I would say, about midway down my leg, somewhere in through here. And I'm going to have like three um, kind of st um, stalks, I guess, or, or stems coming down so maybe that's one I guess that's going to be a little bit longer than I thought but that's all right and then I'm going to have maybe one coming out over in through here like this and you could really have them as big or as small as you want his hand is right out you know in front of him so this could look much larger than it actually is just because the way that he's holding it so now that i've got that on there i'm just going to be picking up green paint to do the little leaves and these leaves are just um they kind of are just like little ovals coming off you could use a touch of white as well so i've got green and white on my brush right now just giving myself these little kind of oval type of shapes coming off of the the stem itself and they can come off and kind of be on top of one another or independent from each other it's all just kind of an illusion that we are that we're creating what I like to do when I'm doing stuff like this though is try not to be too systematic so maybe one goes in front of the stem maybe one goes off to the side that way it looks to me like it's a little bit more natural than just you know three on one side and three on the other so when I'm doing stuff like this I do try and you know tap into my chaotic side of the brain so I can make it look a little bit more natural and I'm just doing these little kind of oval type shapes coming out here maybe we've got one coming out behind the hand and then I'll pick up a tiny bit of white paint while these are still kind of wet and maybe just put a little highlight on some of them that'll just give them a touch of dimension so they're not just flat green and then while these are kind of setting and and drying a little bit i'm going to wash and dry my brush i'm going to do a little red ribbon coming out um, from underneath his hand so i just put red paint on my brush you could have this coming out in any which direction i just want to give the little illusion that maybe there's a ribbon that's at the top of this um, mistletoe of sorts and he's just kind of holding it in his big big paw <laughs> and that it's just kind of the little pieces of the ribbon are just kind of you know sticking out here and there maybe a little bit um, over on this side as well something like this and maybe this kind of just kind of 
comes down in this direction and then while that red is still wet I'm going to pick up a touch of white paint and just kind of give myself a little bit of a highlight on some of it just so it has a little bit of dimension and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to put on some little berries so these berries are white you can have white ones or red ones. I'm choosing to do the white ones. So I want them to have a little bit of dimension to them. So I'm going to use my, um, my cool gray from the cave plus white on my brush. And I'm really just going to give myself these um, small little circular type shapes throughout my, um, throughout my, my mistletoe. So you can overlap it on the green a little bit. You can put little par part of the, the berries coming out the side. So you could do just a little kind of semicircle of sorts, but I'm using gray and white. So that way I have a little bit of diversity in my in the colors and if you run into wet green I'm using a lot of paint on my brush right now so I'm kind of just laying it on top of the green but if you run into a place where you um, where your green is too wet you could certainly just wait a minute and let it dry I'm gonna put maybe a couple more down below and then oh, I need a little bit more white on my brush and then we have one little tiny step left to go so once you've got all of your mistletoe on here you can wash and dry this small brush because we'll be using the small brush for the next step you of course can make any little tweaks you want i just put red back on my brush so i can make this a little bit redder in through here and then we'll use the same small brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna go bottom left on this one with some black paint. I think I'm gonna go right in this rock right here. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you want your identifying mark to be is totally fine. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun winter animal and I look forward to painting it sipping with you again sometime.